What up, AOK Mafia? It's your boy R. That kicks it just like that. We back with another one. All right, y'all. So, as promised, I told y'all I was gonna give y'all another video today. Before we do tonight's live stream, and before I take my two week break from YouTube, that's right, I'm taking a break from YouTube. But we got a video here. Hey, wait, hold on, wait. That don't mean y'all stop watching my videos. I got over 2,000 videos uploaded to this channel. Now, if you ain't seen them all, you better be biz watching while I'm gone. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. Bernie Mac, my Bernie Mac voice. Anyway, we got a video here. I think this was sitting in by one of my viewers. This is called 911 Dispatch Ignores Drowning Woman Plea for Help Disturbing 911 Calls. I will have the link to the original down in the description box below. Y'all boys girls ready? I'm ready. Let's check this out. Well, this will, this will teach you next time don't drive in the water. Those were among the last words that Deborah Stevens would ever hear. Oh, no. Those words were said by a 911 operator who was working her last shift. What happened? I hope her last shift was her last shift, if you know what I mean. Stay tuned to find out. Oh, man. Welcome to True 911 Calls. In today's special, we examine emergency calls gone wrong and their aftermath. True now, home. Today, we're going to be talking about an early morning 911 call between a frantic victim mm. circumstance and a callous 911 operator. Mm. The ending was as tragic as it was avoidable. Before we continue, please be sure to like this video. As well, please do subscribe to stay up to date with all the great content that we are putting out. Man, 911 call videos be very fascinating. Uh, every time I do them, I enjoy them. So it's definitely a channel that I would um, suggest you guys checking out. Hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button for them. One last thing before we continue. Please be advised that this video has to do with real life people in real life mm -hmm. situations. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Always. I want one more share emergency. I'm open emergency, it's a very emergency. I'm in a flooding. My car is veered off the road while I'm doing my newspapers and I'm flooded over here on the end of King Gage. That is how Deborah Stevens began the frantic final phone call of her life. It was 4.38 in the morning of August 24, 2019, when Deborah was out delivering papers in her Fort Smith, Arkansas community. Unfortunately, she had chosen to do this during a torrential downpour. Mm. On the other end of the call was Donna Renault. Donna was working her final shift as a police dispatcher. She had decided to leave the job. So her last shift was her last shift, but she was leaving the job. Wow. Dark. It's, it's gray SUV laying in the wind. The mortar's all the way up to my windows. Okay, hold on for me. Don't hang up. And it's coming in my windows. I mean, I'm floating in water right now, ma'am, ma'am. In the darkness of the early morning, Deborah had made the wrong turn down a street. Mm. Unfortunately, she didn't realize how high the water was until it was too late. Mm. Debbie Stevens, please help me. I don't want to die. You're not mm. going to die. Hold on for me. Well, I need to die. I'm scared. See, I, can't, I don't like when people say stuff like that because you don't know the dire stress and, and the severity of the situation that this woman is in. She could die. And a matter of fact, she did. Don't just say, you, don't, you can't just tell somebody you're not there to see it. Don't just tell somebody you're not going to die. Ooh, I can't stand that. Uh, obviously, you want to be optimistic, and you want, but you don't want to give them a false hope. You want to say, "Ma'am, give me a moment. We're gonna do the best that we can for you." I'm sorry. I didn't know the water. I couldn't see the water when I came up on it, man. It just all of a sudden hit me. Mm. Her nerves were so frayed that Deborah can be heard apologizing to the woman that she had called for help. How long is it gonna be, man? My son's gonna die, and I can't charge it. It's gonna get wet. It's all the way up. It's all the way up to my neck, almost. Oh my God. Less than a minute after the call began, Deborah was understandably in tears as she asked how long it would be. I said, "Hold on for me." Oh God, please help me! Please help me! I don't wanna die. Miss Debbie, I need you to calm down and hold on, okay? On. The operator had attempted to gather more information, sounding detached. I can just see in my head at that point where she's crying, the water's all the way already up to her neck. I can just see she just slowly just sinking. And really it's kind of rapid that is happening. But it just kind of seems slow because she's talking. 
but it's happening. It's probably going like like that at that at that rate at that pace. Like every thirty seconds, she drops down a half an inch or so. It's man. In the situation, as she attempted to calm a terrified Deborah. Meanwhile, Deborah was becoming more and more frantic, scared, alone in her car as the water was in and rising to her chest. She had called 911 scared and desperately hoping for help. Yeah, ma'am, I'm sorry, I'm scared. I need to call because don't get me. I need some money to help me. I need some money to help me. I'm scared. I need some money in the vehicle. Less than a minute later, the 911 operator attempts to give instructions to Deborah. Listen to me. I you're, listen to me. If you're doing the paper, yes. you got to know at least a little bit of where you are. I can do this paper right over here, ma'am. It's impossible to say of the seemingly callousness in the 911 operator's voice. Perhaps it was due to it being her last day on the job, or perhaps it was just a detached tone that 911 operators take to put some emotional distance between themselves and real life situations. That yeah, th those those two things is, makes a whole lot of sense. Um, the woman could have been talking to her in the way that she was because of the fact that she's like, "Hey, it's my last day on the job. I don't really care so much." which is horrible because it's like um, a loss of compassion for um, someone else that is clearly in a dire situation in need of some serious assistance. And then the other side of that is this woman being detached because of being it. And then the, on the other side of that is this dispatcher being detached from you know certain emotions because of you know and then the other side of that is this dispatcher being detached from dire and the other side of that is this dispatcher being detached from having empathy for someone else because of the fact that like this woman said you have to kind of disassociate your own emotions from what is happening um, to someone else and that that's that's kind of a scary thing too because it's almost like you desensitize yourself um because you hear dire because you're hearing stuff like this all the time because you're a dispatcher if they're calling it's usually it's not a good thing they encounter it's an apartment because all i see is an apartment i don't know the names of any of these apartments what, is the, apartment? I don't what is the apartment complex look like I, I can't see them, but man, there's two sets of apartment complexes, one on the right and one on the left. Okay, I'm gonna send somebody out there to you, okay? He was shy of three and a half minutes into the call before the operator had gathered enough information to send help. I just know there's two sets of apartments no, over there. She's not sure. Listen to me. I don't, don't, listen to me. It is agonizing to hear the terrified Deborah talk to the operator. Yeah. It has to be stated at this point that the operator speaking to Deborah was doing what she could to help. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, she, yeah, it does seem like it. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like she's being too horrible to um, Deborah. Deborah had spotted some people who seemingly could have helped, but for reasons unknown, never did. Wow. Run the tree. Okay, I'm gonna send somebody out there to you. Okay. What? The door is getting up to me. I'm scared. I hate it, Deborah. But you, you have every right to be scared. I don't have an office. Less than a minute later, Deborah once again asks how long it will be, as her newspapers floated around her in her car. Please help me. For whatever reason, Deborah's fear was met with the following response. Listen to me. I need you to calm down and hold on. I'm just scared, man. I understand that you're scared, but there's nothing I can do sitting in a chair, so you're going to have to hold on, and I'm going to send you somebody, okay? Okay. Okay. Poor thing. Poor thing. Hello? Hold on, I'm still here. Hold on. Deborah again pleads for help, afraid of what may happen if she is not reached in time by rescue personnel. The terror in her voice is evident with every syllable she utters. <sighs> it is... I can't help but to wonder if, if Deborah really couldn't open up her doors open the windows i mean if it's it's probably a um see you guys if you're watching this i i, I ask you please 
arm yourself with certain tools to be able to get yourself out of this type of situation. There are um, certain type of instruments that you can use. I have one myself. I got to check to make sure that it's still in my car. Um, you can crack the window, shatter the window so that you can be able to get out of it. Um, seat belt cutters that are attached to the device that you can use to shatter the window. Even though you hope and pray that nothing like this ever happens to you or your, or your loved ones, you, you want to be armed with something that can get you out of situations like this. My son thought were they going to see me? Can you tell me how long it's going to be, ma'am? It's getting high on me. <laughs> Poor thing. She's at that point now where she knows that this is not, this the outcome is not going to be a good one. I told you. She knows. She knows. Oh man. Oh my God. Oh. I'm sorry, Deborah. You're not going to die. I'm sorry. Deborah. The detachment in 911 operator Donna Renault's voice is evident as Deborah is looking for some reassurance. It was just seconds after that Donna, the 911 operator, had said something inexplicably rude to the woman who was asking her for help. Nobody save me. <laughs> Am I not on the phone with you trying to get you some help? I wish I could tell you that the 911 operator's tone had changed after that. But as you can probably imagine, it didn't. Hey, I'm sorry. You're not going to die. I don't know why you're freaking out. It's okay. I know the water level is I'm high. Scared. I understand that. But you freaking out doing nothing but losing your oxygen up in there. So. Once again, you can hear a terrified Deborah apologize to the 911 operator. When just seconds later, Deborah is told, I'm going to die. I don't know why you're freaking out. It's okay. I know the water And as if that wasn't bad enough. Just a few seconds later, as Deborah mentions being afraid that her phone is going to die. It's gonna die. I know not gonna find me. It's gonna ruin my brand new phone. Do you really care about your brand new phone? I mean, you're over there crying for your life. Who cares about your phone? Tearing up, man. I wasn't expecting this. Miss Dispatch Lady, put yourself in her predicament. I can't believe you. I couldn't be a 911 dispatch operator. I couldn't do it. Every single day, I'll be going on an emotional roller coaster. Every single day. Every single day, I would probably have 10 plus people that I would want to check on to see what was the outcome of any given situation that I was a part of on that phone. I care too much. I feel for Deborah right now in this moment. I need to get down, I need to throw up. I need to throw up right now. Well, then you're in water. You can throw up. It's not going to matter. If you got throw up on yourself, they'll still help you. Her tone just gets worse. As Deborah gets more frantic and becomes more afraid of this serious situation, the operator doesn't handle it better. She handles it worse. You got two things that's happening that is getting worse. Two things. Deborah's fear of what may happen to her and then this negative switch in energy that's coming from this operator that is being directed towards Deborah that's only making Deborah feel worse. Part of the reason why I'm 
feeling as emotional as I am right now is because I'm thinking about when my mom passed away and in her dying moments, how I treated her and how rude I was to her. But kind of like this dispatcher, I wasn't expecting for the outcome to be the worst. See, unlike this dispatcher, I didn't think there was anything, actually, well, kind of, sort of like this dispatcher, I didn't think that there was gonna, there was anything that serious wrong with my mother. Thought she was going to be fine. Didn't think she was dying. I thought she was kind of like Deborah here, or kind of like this dispatcher thought Deborah was doing. I thought that she was being a bit extra. But I wouldn't have thought the same way had it been this situation. I wouldn't have thought how this dispatcher thought, oh, you're fine. You're not going to die. The water level, you're, you're, you're good. They're going to get there. I wouldn't have thought that. My mother's situation was a lot different. A moment later, a terrified Deborah asked the operator to pray with her. Uh, will you pray with me, please? You go ahead and start off the prayer and I'll listen to you. I sure will. I feel like all the audio volume dropped. What the heck? I'm confused. That act of compassion was seemingly short-lived, however. In her state of panic, Deborah mentions being afraid that her new SUV was going to be ruined by the floodwaters around her. My vehicle is ruined. Yeah, but it's better that your vehicle is ruined than you being swept away and nobody knows where you are. So just have my phone for you, okay? The fire department coming out to you, so just hold on, okay? I'm super, thank you. I'm sorry if I'm rude, but... The 911 operator... You're not rude, Deborah. The dispatcher is rude. And I'm sorry, Deborah. I'm so sorry. You didn't deserve this. Let Deborah know that the police and fire department are on the way. Deborah once again apologizes for being rude. As she sat in an SUV with water up to her chest, the lights of her SUV were on and her phone dying. It was just seconds later that the 911 operator had said one of the most reprehensible things ever recorded. Keep in mind that this operator is sitting in a dry call center. She said to the following to a terrified woman, alone in an SUV that is filling with water. Things like this happened to me before. Well, this will, te this will teach you next time, don't drive in the water. For whatever reason, Donna felt her job at the moment was to lecture Deborah about making a wrong turn in the dark. I'm sure. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that this woman should have to pay for how she's treating Deborah. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. I don't know what a proper punishment would be for her. Deborah stated many times during the call that she cannot swim, a fact which only added to her terror. Oh the operator god. made her own suggestion to help Deborah. Oh my god, poor Deborah. I know that. See, that's another thing too. I've I've almost drowned before. I've almost drowned before because I can't swim either. And I almost drowned before. So this is something that's like a fear, a fear of my and I wish I can learn how to swim, but I have a bad shoulder. I can't even, I can't even do the rotation of swimming. It just pops. Oh my God. And that pop after about 20 times starts to hurt. Scary. Cause I can't swim. <laughs> I'm sorry, Deborah. I think, Thank even you. though you can't swim, I think you can still stand up in this. How tall are you? I'm sorry. You can once again hear the callousness in the operator's voice as Deborah tells the operator how tall she is. Tall is taller than me. I don't think so. Oh my. I know what her punishment should be. That job that she's leaving this one for shouldn't hire her. 
shouldn't hire her. No job should hire her. I don't know how you go make a living and earn some money, but if this is how you deal with people, you need to work on that. You need to become a better person and be able to prove that before getting another job. I can't believe. She said, woman, how, how would you know how deep this water is? You're not there. I don't know. I'm only five foot tall. Okay, well, you're not three foot, so you'll be just fine. As the call continued, a frantic Deborah ex She's an a-hole. She is an a-hole. Explained that she was not able to see any rescue personnel. The officer, ma'am? No, I don't see nobody, ma'am. I didn't see nobody. No one has fogged up. I got my lights on, but I don't see nobody. Do you hear the fire trucks? I'm rushing water, ma'am. I can't hear nothing. Okay. During the course of the call, the 911 operator had attempted to coordinate with both Deborah and the emergency crews. Near the end of the call, the 911 operator lets out an audible sigh before saying the following. Miss Debbie, you're going to have to shut up, okay? I need oh, you to listen, listen to me. Yes, ma'am. I hate, I hate, I hate that Deborah's like, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> this stuff is is so vivid. I ha I have an image of what Deborah looks like. I can my mind is capable of creating the entire scenario. I can see Deborah. I can see her in the vehicle. The dispatcher. I can see the dispatcher. I know what she looks like. I can create a whole three D replica of everything that's happening. So this is playing out in my head as if it's real time. Can you start your, can you? Donna, the 911 operator, tells the terrified Deborah to shut up as the 911 operator attempts to get more information out of her. You could clearly hear the frustration in the operator's voice. However, that frustration was nothing compared to the feeling of terror held by the woman on the other end of the phone. The sudden shock of additional terror was captured on the call. Donna's car was starting to move. This was met with more indifference from the operator. I'm starting to move! Oh man, my car is starting to move! Please! Okay, listen to me. I know. I'm, I'm trying to get you as help as I can, okay? Just hold on for me. Okay, ma'am, please. I'm I know you're scared. Please. I know. Hold on for me because I've got to take other calls. Push. Things would only get worse for Deborah Stevens less than a minute later. You, I, ooh, you better not take another call. You better not take another call. <laughs> okay, tell me where you are. Listen to me, hold on. Oh. I'm on the phone with her right now. She is legit oh. freaking out. She said the vehicle is now moving in the water and she doesn't know which way it's going. Oh. Stand by. Oh. Stop. Bye. The call from Deborah's cell phone ended at 5 a.m. when the line went dead. That was the last time anyone had ever heard from Deborah Stevens. Just two minutes later, emergency services would find Deborah's vehicle. However, due to high rushing waters, it would still take some time to get to the SUV. At 5.58 a.m., first responders were finally able to reach Deborah's car. But unfortunately, it was too late for Deborah. After paramedics attempted CPR, it was determined that she had drowned. Following
Following Deborah's tragic death, the Stevens family would receive an outpouring of love from the local community. Those who knew her remembered her fondly. Deborah's sister-in-law would tell the TV news magazine Inside Edition, If I was Deborah's family, I don't think I would have had the strength. Like if it was my mom and she was in that situation, I don't think I would have had the strength to listen. No, I couldn't do it. No, I couldn't do it. Sorry about that. But I heard my mom's voice. I replaced Deborah's voice with my mother's voice. And it was too much for me. It was too much for me. I, I, I couldn't imagine listening to that entire phone call and that being my mother. The degree of hatred I would have in my heart for that dispatcher, I would probably make her life a living hell for not being able to at least soothe and ease my mom's mind and emotions during those difficult, difficult moments. Those moments, her last moments, she was still Debbie. She was still genuine and sincere and kind and loving and respectful. She would be laid to rest on September 19th, 2019 in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Deborah was a member of the East Side Baptist Church, where she taught a Sunday school class full of young children for many years. She did not have any children, but she did love dogs. She had a white poodle named Sammy that she took everywhere with her. The chief of police, Danny Baker, would say of the tragedy, probably having another dispatcher in there at the time would have been helpful. But remember, we're talking at 4.30 in the morning, so getting folks down there to assist with dispatch would have been difficult. He also did mention, though, how 911 operators were dealing with quite a bit of calls that morning. In spite of the tragic events, however, Police Chief Baker would also say, I believe that everything was done that was humanely possible, given the circumstances at that time, to save Miss Stevens' life. I'm terribly sorry that it wasn't possible. Unfortunately, I do agree with that statement. I do agree. I do believe that that dispatcher um, worked as fast and as diligent as she could to get somebody to Deborah. I still don't like the way she spoke to Deborah. Speaking of the 911 operator, what did happen to Donna? Well, in the aftermath of the call, Donna left her position voluntarily, since she had already given her notice two weeks ago. It was possible that while Donna was the last person that Deborah ever spoke with, Deborah was the last person Donna spoke to as a 911 operator. In the aftermath of the tragedy, there has been a public outcry for Donna, the former 911 operator, to face punishment. Exactly. Police Chief Baker himself acknowledges that she would have faced disciplinary action if she had still worked with the department, but said that he couldn't see anything that would have been cause for termination or criminal investigation. It was, however, also acknowledged by police that the 911 operator police acknowledged that the 911 call sounded callous and uncaring at times. Yes. That brings us to something that needs to be addressed. There could be any number of reasons why Donna the 911 operator acted in the manner that she did. A busy call center can be a very stressful environment. True. It's possible that Donna was just burnt, or perhaps it was just a flaw in her personality. Exactly. I mean, we, we can listen to all 10 reasons why she conducted herself in the manner that she did, but none of them are justifiable. When I say justifiable, I mean she should have been able to withstrain her, withhold herself from being unprofessional. 
I don't care how stressed out you are. I don't care if rather you want to leave that job or not. Maintain a professional demeanor. Donna was clearly not cut out for the job of a 911 operator, which is something that she was aware of. Though any of these reasons clearly do not excuse the lack of compassion and empathy that she had demonstrated. Some people in my years on this earth, some people don't have empathy. And it amazes me, especially when I come across women that don't have empathy. It blows my mind. The thing that we found even more shocking was the fact that clearly Donna was good at her job. At some point, anyway. As of 2018, she was commended by her department's Facebook group for a professional, dedicated, and outstanding dispatcher. The Facebook page was littered with negative comments after the tragic events. Since leaving her position as a 911 operator, some people felt that the former 911 operator should face jail time for the way that she acted on the call. There is, in fact, an online petition with over 38,000 signatures calling for her arrest. Believe it or not, though, some good did actually come out of this horrible tragedy. As reported by the Arkansas Democratic Gazette, there has been a list of suggested changes to the department. These changes include things such as hiring at least three supervisors for the 911 call center so that one supervisor may be in the center at any time, especially during severe weather. They encourage operators to take training courses in flash floods and swift rotters situations. That's good. That's good. Donna Unfortunately, it takes, sometimes it takes these type of events to happen in order for some of these entities to know or learn what measurements are necessary to take just like they're doing here all right let's have some supervisors on hand but when especially when there's a flash flood warning let's let's make sure all hands are on deck the right people are there to give the right guidance Sometimes it takes for these type of events to happen in order to get that those measures put in place. He would speak to the media shortly after the tragedy. In a phone interview a week before Mrs. Stevens was buried, Donna would say that she regretted telling her she was not going to die most of all. She also regretted not being more kind and understanding. Donna would also realize that she should not have said some of the things that she did. But much of it was necessary to get Debbie's attention so that she could get important information from her. Well, I'm glad that she at least apologized and, and had some regret for some of the things that she said. I don't know how genuine it was, but I'm... It's always this... Um, it's always sticky, I'll say. When somebody publicly comes out and apologizes after receiving so much ridicule from, um, from society. It... I don't know if she would have came out and publicly addressed and apologized in a more empathetic and sincere manner hadn't she uh, received so much ridicule. Um, but I would have preferred it. If she would have publicly apologized first before all the hate that rained down on her, then it would have seemed more genuine. But obviously, it doesn't really happen that often that way. It was a small measure of comfort for the family, but at least Donna had realized what she had done wrong. Man, I was not expecting to get this emotional in this video. Got me over here crying waterworks. Woo! I look, I don't, I just want to get out of here now. I just want to go. Uh, talk to y'all in the live stream tonight. See ya.